We are now part of GovsPodcasts.com. Wow. That's right. Stand Up Memories. Our podcast is now on GovsPodcast.com. As well as StandUpMemories.com. Where we have literally hundreds of shows you can spend hours of your life watching and wondering why you did that. Oh, Peter, this is our sponsor, Cycling Frog. It's seltzer. <laughs> it's seltzer with pot in it. And you know how I know it works? Because I'm holding the can upside down. <laughs> I Cy- saw that. Cyclingfrog.com. Use the code SUM for Stand Up Memories and you will get a discount. And you will love this stuff. Five milligram or two milligram size. It's fantastic. Cyclingfrog.com. Get buzzed without the alcohol. Here it is right side up. Oh. All right, welcome to Stand Up Memories. Here we are again. I'm Peter Bales. This is Jackie the Joker. The whole time you're thinking I'm going to break in and interrupt you. The whole time I could tell you were just so tense. And you thought, I'm going to get through the introduction. Jackie. And you didn't. The Joke Man, Marling. I thought we it was We haven't hard. done this in a while. We haven't. This, this is, is great fun. Season five. And what a guest we have. We have an actor. We have a comedian. We have a super podcaster. The very funny, the very talented Tony Walker. There he is. How Jim. about that? That's just one person. That's one person. That's one person. He's talking about somebody else. He is uh, multi-talented, multifaceted, and what we call in history a Renaissance man. Oh Jesus! <laughs> you know, somebody like anything. If you go on too far and push it too much, then all of a sudden everybody questions everything that came before it. Absolutely. Now people are thinking. Is he really in show business? No, you absolutely <laughs> are a renaissance man. And, uh, somebody who does a lot of things. Somebody who's well-rounded. Yeah, they, I met Tony. They came, uh, him and his compadres came to Jokeland. Uh, I don't know what we were discussing, but th- I was intrigued by his knock em dead comedy troupe. And you guys came over to just to hang and get to know each other, right? It was, uh, that's exactly what it was. We asked you to come on our show. And you said, come to my house in Jokeland. Who's going to pass up that opportunity? So that's and what we did. And it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but that's You great. went on location for Jackie? Yep. We well, got out of the car first thing he said. I thought you guys would be younger. That's what he said. First <laughs> thing he said to us. <laughs> well, and meanwhile, who isn't when I'm doing the talking? Who isn't young? But it was great, and I'm glad you came, and uh, I've done Well, let's show tell the audience what we're talking about here. Uh, Tony, you have a very successful podcast. Why don't you tell our audience about it? Starting with the name of it. Okay. Uh, it's called the Knock'em Dead Comedy Show. Uh, it's a podcast that we do over at Governor's Comedy Club. Um, we've been doing it uh, a little over six years now. So, uh, and we've, you know, we've had you guys on a bunch of times. Um, Jackie's yeah, become a, a good friend of the show. Uh, a lot of great comedians have come on and people of interest, musicians. Uh, and it's great. We're on five days a week which is uh, a lot. It's always fun. People <laughs> call in and... Yeah, they, you know. call, they call and we go live, so we read their comments, uh, you know, on YouTube. And so everybody gets involved in the, whatever the topic is, and we have a good time uh, just discussing, you know, whatever it is. Just going, going with the flow. It's kind of a renaissance podcast. Ah, and it's a good feel because it's right next to the green room off the uh, actual stage it's at backstage, Governor's Comedy Shop. It's backstage so it's, at Governor's. It literally is. And that uh, showbiz feel. Exactly. It has that showbiz feel. It has that showbiz smell. And we've oh. we've had guys come right off the stage, right through the green room. They come right in. Uh, Roy oh, they're Wood lost, Jr. Huh? Oh, well, yes. They, <laughs> <laughs> we have one guy who's, I, I keep forgetting his name, Nathan somebody. He totally, he headlined, but he bombed. He totally bombed. He came off the stage, through the green, and came right in and just complained for, for about a half <laughs> hour about <laughs> How bad it went, but uh, complained about the audience or about yeah. he complained about how crummy he was. Uh, no, he blamed the audience. He blamed the audience, but uh, you know, I, I think and you guys would agree. Mo, you know, governors' uh, audiences are great and very great. forgiving. You know, yes. Al Jolson famously said, 
it is never the audience's fault. You know, if the place is on fire or, you know, no matter what happens, it's, it's up to the I performer. I always say to, that. Do know. not blame the audience if you're a comedian. However, if the if sound... If it's your audience. If the, <laughs> if the sound is not working, if the air conditioning is not working, if the lights go out, then you can blame the audience. But otherwise... It's but it's still your job to deal yes, with it. I did a show in Pennsylvania it. at some Jewish center, and the, the, their little tiny sound system completely went out, and they were all in these big round, eight or ten people round tables. It's like a rec room of a, a Jewish community center, and I stood on the table in the middle and worked like I was working Westbury Music Fair, but I was standing <laughs> on a table, and they all said that was... They, they love the show because they appreciate the fact that you may do as opposed to, I'm out of here, this is, you know, this is I horrible. stood on a milk crate once and did a show. Uh, <laughs> I just know I could have gotten had, them. I could have gotten them. He but. had to top me. He had to top me. <laughs> I did a show where the, the electric went out once. It was a 55 and over community, so everybody went home and grabbed, uh, you know, Flashlights and torches and whatnot, and we did the show. We did the seriously. I swear great. to you, yeah. I love that. Oh, it actually created a fun atmosphere. We had a great time. Actually. Oh, that yeah. is funny. That's yeah. fun. That's yeah. Fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. I've done a show where a fight broke out in the audience. Oh, was I, that when the guy didn't like your act? And he came <laughs> up on stage. He charged the stage. <laughs> actually, a fight, like between, or are you making a joke? A, a real fight, a physical blows being thrown. Did you stop? I stopped and I waited it out. And uh, the audience was stunned and they were broken up and they were taken outside. And the audience wants to have a fun night. They still want the night to work. Absolutely. And I went back to work and they were laughing and the night was not lost. It's a weird thing though these days because you know with TikTok and social media everybody's posting the the crowd work and it's not always going well. And, and that seems to be a more common thing. That, and, and people are charging the stage or they're throwing something. You know? Because they want to be... They want to be a part of Superstars. It. Right. You know? uh, and it, I don't know, do you find that... Because it seems I, like the younger guys are coming almost to ex expecting that now. Yes, I, I do find that. Yeah. You know, that reminds me... See, oh. I'm lucky. I, my audience is so old they don't even have <laughs> cell phones. You know, so. <laughs> Early 80s. I come into the comic strip, and the show's ongoing. And I said to Jerry Seinfeld and Larry Miller, who had already been on, and I said, how's the show going? And Seinfeld goes, let me put it this way. None of the comedians tonight are trying to do well. We're just trying to hold the stage as our own territory. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great line? Uh, it's, you know. oh. You know, I remember it hadn't happened knocking wood in zillions of years, but in the old days, <clears throat> somebody would heckle you, and you'd like let one or two go, and then you'd fight back. You didn't want to answer every time because you didn't want to get the dialogue going. And eventually, it, the guy would be drunk, or, or the woman would be drunk, and they'd literally come and they'd take him out. You know, take him out, you know, kick him out, which is so weird because it just really puts a weird vibe in the place. And that was always such a challenge. And like you said, very often you could snap them right back in because they're there to have a good time. But when you finally, you know, I always tell people if there's a problem, I tell the club, you come and get them and yeah. take them out. Don't make me say, right. Absolutely right. get this guy out of here Tony, because then I'm right. the bad guy. Right. Tony, you know? ironically, every time they threw a drunk out of the club, Jackie knew the guy. <laughs> or, or, or else it was me. <laughs> so Tony, 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 talk to me. How is comedy going for you? What's the best part of it? And to be honest, you know, on this show, we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sure. What are you liking about stand-up comedy? How long have you been doing it? And what drives you crazy about stand-up comedy? I've been doing it uh, a little over four years. I've okay, he's it. a newbie. Yes, definitely a newbie. But I've been doing... Uh, I, I Knock Em Dead Comedy, the podcast, the name comes from a comedy troupe that I have. We do um, audience interactive murder mystery, comedic murder mystery shows, dinner theater. And I've so been, you're familiar with being on stage right. and going to the lab. I've been doing that for almost 30 right, years. Right. So, yeah, so that part of it, I, you know, timing I'm, I'm good with. The challenge 
is being up there alone. That is a first for it's me. A, it's a different world. Completely different world. You know, my I, my yeah. whole thing, playing on stage with a partner, you know, it you could share, you know, if, if it's not going so good, you look over at him exactly. or her, you know. Yeah. There's a comic that I know, a great guy named Jeff Bosey. And Did you say great comic? I said a great guy. <laughs> oh, a great guy, okay. <laughs> so you, you know this guy. Him. Oh, yeah. Let's explain this to the audience. <clears throat> okay. You hire him to be in a production. Yes. And he plays... He plays my daughter. Your daughter. He, <laughs> he gets dressed up in drag. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And... <laughs> but I, have, I understand he's great and hysterical at this. Yes. And he took me aside and he told me in confidence, he goes, don't tell anybody, but I love dressing up. <laughs> that now was what, long before he worked for me. Can you say that on TV? Yes. What's, what, it, it's a great, what's the show? What's the name of the show? Is well, we have a few different shows. Yeah. Uh, we have a mob-themed show. We have okay. a redneck wedding, and then we have an 80s-themed uh, theme show. Um, but, you know, they're all murder mysteries. You have your nerd. You have your bombshell. You have a host. You have a guy who's flamboyant. Like, it's all the same characters. Did he audition to, to play no, a woman? No, I asked him. It was... And, it, kind of going back to like Milton Berle, you know. Tell the, the, the truth. You met in a drag bar. Oh no. Yeah, male f looking for male ad. Yeah, that's um, how we met. These shows are very popular and very funny. Yeah, we have a great time. Now, how do people? No, don't book skip them? over this. How's he? I'm just one question. How does he look as a woman? Does he look like a man dressed as a woman, or does yes. it look well, again, like the old Milton Berle? It's it's a it's a gag. It's not. You know, it's not like today where, you know, they're really seriously in drag. It's, it's like Milton Berle. Okay. It's, it's all right, so go ahead. Jackie. But it's only an improvement for Jeff. When you can only look When better. Jeff is dressed in drag for this show, he's a two-bag number. Ah. <laughs> that is a reference to an old Rodney Dangerfield joke that Jackie gave to Rodney that knocked Johnny Carson literally back from the desk. The joke desk. is the girl is so ugly... She's known as a two-bagger. That's a girl that's so ugly, you not only got to put a bag over her head, you got to put a bag over your own head in case her bag rips, <laughs> which is just, which is so great. And that doesn't mean I wouldn't follow you and see this show and, I and try see and hit show. on her. How do people <laughs> book it? What, what do they do? Knock'emdeadcomedy.com. Knock'emdeadcomedy.com. Uh, for all things Knock em Dead Comedy. So you have these shows and you have... Now, your each of these... Like the mob one yeah. and the hillbilly one, is it the same troupe? Or is oh, yeah, there a different all, troupe for each? Well, it's not like a typical theater run where, you know, for these weekends you're going to be at this place. So I do have some reserves, you know, but for the, I have a set cast of regulars and we just, uh, we rehearse all year round so that we're always ready a for lot of fun. whatever show. Oh, we have a great time. A lot great of time. fun. So yeah. who is hiring you, like a PTA or a comedy Corporate club events, or? fundraisers, restaurants, <clears throat> private parties, anything. There you go. Anything. Yep, yeah. So let me ask you, four years, how is it going in stand-up? And what would you say to somebody who's just starting? What have you learned in four years, what to do, what not to do? Uh, what do you expect? I, I think reading the audience is, is a big deal. In fact, you know, when we're taping this, we were talking before it went on the air. I saw this morning, you, uh, Tom Kelly just put out his podcast with you where you guys are talking politics, and you nailed it. You know, you want to make 100% of that audience laugh, not 60%, not 40%, and that's spot on. So, so you don't go up there and say, I love the Yankees and I hate the Mets. Right. right. Exactly. And in fact, I, t I talk about that to my comedy students. Uh, people who want to start out in stand-up comedy and uh, go to standupuniversity.com. I'm not going to say <laughs> anything about you plugging your stupid <laughs> university. See, did you see he, he nudged me I, I to break that. his chops. <laughs> no, I nudged him to say, a great I'm about to irritate you. Uh, that was an I'm about to irritate you nudge. But I do, I do say that. New Yorkers are very passionate about the Yankees and the Mets. If you say you're one fan or the other, you can divide the audience. Right. Politics, it's even more it. intense. Right. And, and I simply want... I'm even hesitant sometimes to say I like women because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's out there. That your friend who dresses <laughs> up as a woman could be out there and look how confused <laughs> he is. 
right? <laughs> so I don't want to get anybody upset. You know, I try to dress as a man, but I don't defend it in any way. I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. All right, about. Jackie you know has that. now irritated mm -hmm. me back. <laughs> You know, well, I'm, we haven't done this in a while, so I didn't realize at first that he was nudging me about, look at this, I'm plugging my show. I thought he was saying, I teach comedy, and he was nudging me like, you could use a few lessons type <laughs> thing. See, I, that's, that's what, what I you thought, thought too. too. Yes. Yes. Either that or because you're old, maybe he was trying to keep you awake. I'm right, not right. sure. Yeah. <laughs> They're not mutually exclusive. Although I must tell the audience, I once never test Jackie don't go up to Jackie and say, I'm going to stump you with a joke, because you're not going to stump him. I got a joke from an 1890s joke book. 1890s. 1890s. And, and I ran the joke by him, and I did not stump him. It's uh, all the same joke since Auntie since and Cleopatra, since Adam and Eve. Since Adam and Eve. The a lot first of joke on record is what? Anthony and Cleopatra. The first joke on record is about what? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I just what, heard that the what first joke on, first I joke. don't know the actual joke, but what the subject matter. Stand matters. back, Eve. I don't know how big the first joke on record get. is about is a fart joke. Actually, I just read that the other day. It's all right there. Going back to where? Per, I mean, Pagoccio or Pagaccio or something ancient like that. Ancient Greek theater. Um, I want to say like yeah, sixteen, seventeen hundreds. If I'm not mistaken. Well, don't joke books. Uh, you know, this is one of the things that's always made me nuts because. You know, there's joke books dating back, you know, to like the year 1200, or even you go back to the Joe Miller's Jests, which are, were horrible jokes, and they made that joke book just to break his balls. And then he became famous for having this joke book. <clears throat> but these old joke books, all of a sudden they're like, holy mackerel, I can't believe that priests are fooling around with young boys and altar boys and blah, blah, blah. And they, oh, yeah, and they were doing that in the 50s. These old joke books, half of the jokes, are about priests taking advantage of the altar boys and the altar boys getting it on with the bishops. And that's going back hundreds and hundreds of years. You put men and boys in the same situation, you know, they all have testosterone and that stuff's going to happen. Nothing changes. Just like the jokes going back hundreds and hundreds of years are fart jokes and poop jokes and vomit jokes and pee jokes because people have been doing that forever and it's always funny. Absolutely. I don't care if it's a, wow, a caveman this... standing there and his wife farts. He's not going to laugh? Right. And imagine after eating a dinosaur, what it would smell like? Oh that my is as God. Close, that is as close to a diatribe as we've had on this podcast. <laughs> well, since sometimes we I have to make a stand. You do. And sometimes after you make a stand, it's time to rest. Okay, now... <laughs> Peter drinks tea. I do. I do. Sometimes even chamomile tea. All right, thank you. All what, right. do you what do you say to a blind man? What? Take tea and see. That's a 1950s reference to Lipton commercial. Okay, a lot of our audience got that. Thank you. <laughs> Tony, how tough is it getting stage time for comedians starting out today? Uh, it's. I feel it's pretty tough. Um, I personally, I don't like. You could. You can get stage time if you go to a bar. It seems like every bar and pizza place is doing open mic nights. Well, yeah, and, and I'm not a fan. I don't like competing with the whatever game is on and whatever else the coffee maker. So yeah. I, I. So my for me personally, my time is even more limited because mm -hmm. I'm just going to, to governors and maybe maybe the city, but that's rare for me. But so I'm just. I'm staying there, so it's it's tough to get stage time to, to really hone it, it. Because even though there's so many play, it seems like there's more and more and more comedians. I, I'll tell you, <clears throat> certain places along the way, and I'll never forget, it was probably 20 years ago, I don't know what how many years ago, the first time I heard the concept that you can get on stage if you bring enough people. Mm. Like if you, you have to bring 10 people or five people, and if you do, then you can get stage time. I'm like, that's crazy. But it's, then it became the norm, right? right. Oh, they didn't yeah. have that, of course, for the longest time when we started out. And now there are clubs in Manhattan, I haven't heard of it on Long Island, uh, that charge. Some of the comedians. local producers yeah. are doing that on the island. Some of them. Charge the comedians. They are. Charge the comedians to or, go or, on. Or getting them to bring people, one or the other. One yeah. or the other. Yeah. One yeah. way or another, 
<laughs> right. But once you get the feeling of doing well. If they buy a pizza, you can come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's not, not even an exaggeration. No, though. I know it's yeah. not. Uh, but you love the feeling of doing well. Oh, what's better than that, right? What's better than that? I always say uh, it's better than sex. We were just talking to Bobby Collins, and he agreed. Killing an well, audience. that's because you can remember the last time you were on stage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See? Exactly. Uh, but it is. Uh, it is. Killing an it audience is better, is than, is than, better sex. than sex. Maybe not in a car like you do it, but for the most part, stand-up comedy. I want to make with love with the lights on. Close the car door. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've heard that in real life. That's supposed yeah. to be a, be, be a joke. I do not deny it. I do not deny it. So wow. you tell us, okay. Tony, you're, you're a, a podcaster. What is the best thing that makes a podcast work? And what doesn't, what drives you crazy? You've been doing it a long time. You it, must have had. Do you get feedback from the callers? Yeah. In Fe real the, time? The, usually it's more uh, the comments that are coming through. You know, because we're, we're streaming live on YouTube. I, that, well, I guess that's what I meant, where they yeah. actually type, Oh yeah, some slow of them, down, speed up, oh, shut they'll up. Tell you, yeah, they'll tell you flat out, please tell this guy to, to shut up or please bring this guy back. Uh, I, get, I get a lot of that type of feedback. And, and I, for me personally, I, I rely on that. To me, that's what, that's what it's all about for me, that interaction. I feel that's kind of like our niche. That that's the equivalent of the me. audience laughing or not laughing. Right. You, know. you, you get a feel of, yeah, if you're doing it right. Um, because the, and we've talked about it, and we've talked about it with, with Michael, the, you know, you get into the algorithms and the numbers, and it's, the, if we knew the science or the magic, right, we'd, we'd be doing it all the time, and we'd be doing it right, so to speak, but the numbers can, can be fooling, you know, it, it, there's so many different things to look at. For me personally, it's, in fact, I just had a guy, I meant to tell you, my wife had her um, high school reunion this weekend. So Saturday night, went to the reunion, and I'm, you know, one of the spouses who was dragged there, so I don't know anybody. I get to talking to another guy. And your wife is going, got him, got mm. him, oh, yeah. got him. <laughs> Some of the guys are still owing her, paying her the money there. Um, so I'm talking to another spouse who got dragged there, too, and we're just talking. He says, so what do you do? And I tell him, you know, about the podcast and governors. The next day, they're all meeting again for breakfast. So I meet with this guy again. He goes, I watched your show. I said, oh, really? He goes... I got to check out this guy, Peter, because you were just on my show a few days ago. Wow. He said, I got to check out this guy, Peter. He goes, but now I'm going to watch your show regularly. And, you know, wow. but that's, to me, that's how I gauge how it's going. And that's the ultimate compliment. Right. And the trick is have that guy clone that guy. Right. Not clone him, but get that same reaction. Exactly. What is odd here is that you <clears throat> just gave me a compliment and Jackie is letting it go without... I was not done, but you <laughs> might as well grab it and run. You know? well, th and, well, to be nice though, of course, Jackie is did one they, of our did more the guy, popular Did guests. he have the sound on? <laughs> uh, there you go. Now, you, <laughs> Come on. Now are you happy? There you go. <laughs> Come on. You're a douche. <laughs> I was going to let you have the compliment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, and it was probably the first time you've been on our show that you were able to speak. I've, I've been there. Yeah, I was on solo. Who is this guy? I want proof. What, the guy who told me that? What, want me to call him? <laughs> now, I yeah, want I, him I've to, been on. Uh, Jokeland at AOL.com. J-O-K-E-L-A-N-D at AOL.com. If that poor unfortunate soul is watching, please email me and tell me how much you enjoyed Peter Bales. <laughs> <laughs> on Tony's Morning Governor's show. It's, it's the Knock 'em Dead comedy show, right? Correct. The Knock 'em Dead comedy Knock 'em show. Dead podcast. Because obviously Peter knocked him dead. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I'm, I was there solo. Usually, I'm with Jackie, and we have a blast on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. Yeah. But I the, don't get to say much. Usually, I just lean in and say, take a pill. You do 90% of the talking. I do How not. dare you say that? I only talk to interrupt you or to remind you <laughs> that you're being dull. That's my only job. <laughs> right? What I actually love about it is because you're, you're so known for the jokes. And it, you, you come on a show like that and you just, you know, bust our chops and we have a lot of, a lot of fun. And that, to me, that's a side that a lot of people don't see enough of, of you. You have so many great stories and you're so quick with picking, picking on people. 
And, and well. <laughs> no, we, we, have, we do have fun. We do have we fun. Have fun. We have fun. You ha I think if you're having fun in a podcast, uh, it comes across to the audience. I think so, yeah. On podcasts, on stage. One question. You do these shows with these guys. Do you ever do stand-up with one of those guys or girls as a partner? Or have you ever thought of trying that? We, you know, I, we did once, my, one of my former co-hosts, uh, we did, um, we, we were doing the podcast and James came in. It was an afternoon, it was summertime, around this time of year. They had, a, they had kids at camp at, in the show and they had a magician and this guy was bombing. The kids hated him. So James actually came in and he said, I need you guys to go on stage and just entertain. We got to get this magician out of here. And this <clears> is before I had ever done anything, uh, you know, any stand-up. I was like, well, what are we going to do? He gave us 10 minutes to, you know, warning, and he wanted us to do 20. So the two of us went out there, and we let the kids vote. We were telling bad dad jokes on purpose, and the kids had to vote who were telling the worst jokes. That's good. Which, yeah, thank That's goodness. Smart. And it totally it, worked. It did my act. <laughs> <laughs> But just the other night, at, I was at Governor's Friday night, and there were these twin brothers, Greg and Rob, they're called. They're out of Staten Island, and it was a duo act. I haven't, I don't know about you guys, I haven't seen a duo act in ages. Fantastic. I, I loved it, I, and I, I hope to see these guys again. Greg and Rob, they were called. Was, they were just playing off each other, or mm -hmm. was straight man and a, it, it wasn't your usual, like, Abbott and Costello, straight man, but they were... They were kind of like, almost like you guys. They were, they were throwing each other softballs. I think it's been, you know, they haven't worked out. But, but they were doing a, a little crowd that's a fun thing because you don't yeah. see that. Yes, anymore. and right. what the audience needs to understand is that was a camp show for young kids who don't really pick up on adult material and wouldn't have been appropriate. You went up and you improvised, and that's what yeah. comics have to do. Right. You know, uh, I've done camp shows, and you just have to do old jokes, and you have to adjust to a very, very young, they're 12, 13, some of them. Right. And but going back before, I was talking about timing and whatnot, uh, and I think I actually talked to you about it. When you opened for uh, Bob Nelson, or hosted oh, yeah. for Bob Nelson, what was that, maybe a year or so ago? Yeah, no, it was just me and Bob, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, I couldn't, I mean, you're one of my favorites as it is, and you're one of everybody's favorites, but I've never seen you do nothing but crowd work before, and I was completely blown away, because uh, crowd work, you know, that could bomb really fast, or it can be amazing, yeah, but depending he, on how you work it. But he is a master at it. Right. Not to give him a compliment. But, well, I'm you know. uncomfortable with you behaving like this, being so nice. But you got to understand, if for 30 years you do the same thing every night, <laughs> of course. Of course. Good. Good. He's back to being normal. Of course it's going to work. <laughs> hey, listen. You know, you talk about a camp show. I, ha I used to have this in my act. Uh, I, I used to work at a You dropped something? I dropped something from my act. You'll see why. Uh, I used to work at a fat camp. The salary wasn't much, but I used to get like 40 bucks for a Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't do that anymore. <laughs> that's, but that's, that's funny. funny. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> hey, listen, 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 listen. Tony, you have been great. You are oh, a, pod really? you're a great wow, podcast fast. guest because you're a great podcast host. Now, let's tell the audience. Uh, Govs.com is where you go to find everything governors, who's going to be there, when and where the shows are. And there are three governors clubs, uh, including the flagship in Levittown. And for Knock 'em Dead Comedy, they go where? KnockEmDeadComedy.com. All right. And for all of the shows that Governors has, uh, they go where? Um, pretty much YouTube. YouTube.com uh, slash Govs Comedy Club Podcast. All that is right. where the shows are, yep. Um, Tony Walker. Facebook, too. And I'm going to say October 19th, because I don't know when this is going to air. I'm going to be at the brokerage with you. Yeah, it's going to be me and Jackie. Jackie is the star of the show, uh, headlining, and I'll, you know, you'll see when you get there that I'm propping them up. And you'll be doing crowd work? <laughs> 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 no, you know what? Uh, he gets a, a great crowd, and we have so much fun. We really do. And yeah. I uh, hate to agree with him. You and know Jackie's, that. Uh, oh, yeah. and I say this, you know, he's the best joke teller on the planet. And it's about <coughs> it's about fun, and that and that's why, you know, I'm not gonna. And Jackie's not gonna talk about politics and controversial things. When you're there at the club for that night, 
you're all together, you're an audience family, you want to forget about work and all the stress right. from the week and just, just laugh together. And if you're not So a- we should end this podcast as long as you're talking about doing a camp show and children's show. This guy hires a clown <laughs> for his kid's fifth birthday party. And the kids all get gathered on the floor and the clown comes out <clears throat> and he says, all right, kids, guess what I've got in my pocket? And the first kid says, is it candy, mister? He says, no, it's not candy. Is it a toy, mister? No, it's not a toy. It's my penis. And the father comes over and grabs the guy and says, what the hell is wrong with you, you jerk? I'm calling the cops. He said, no, listen, I do this this show at night too. And sometimes, you know, I'm a little hungover and I did an adult show last night and I got a little confused. Just give me another chance. The guy says, all right, all right. He goes out and says, all right, kids. Try and guess what I got in my pocket. And the kid says, is it candy, mister? No, it's not candy. Is it? Another kid says, is it a toy, mister? He says, no, it's not a toy. And he turns to the father, he says, you better call the cops because it's my penis again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Jackie. That, now that was, we can get away with that, right? <laughs> can, can we get, get away, away with can. that? Yes, if absolutely. we can get away with you making fat jokes about the poor kids. Well, you just made a, they made can't a pedophile control, joke. They because. can't control themselves. <laughs> They can't control themselves if they eat like pigs and blow up like a... I want to thank Tony Walker of Knock 'em Dead Comedy. And this has been Stand Up Memories with, yes, Jackie the Joke Man Martling. I am Peter Bales. We got to have you on again. You're so much fun. I would love to. Great job, Tom. And and, uh, if I could quickly just say to be invited by you guys, you know, Peter Bales and Jackie Martling, I mean, that's... To me, that's the equivalent of a comedian getting invited by governors for the first time to take their stage. You know, because that, well, that's, that's like, like the wow. mecca, and you Thank guys you. are. Thank you. That's yeah, a compliment absolutely. to both don't, of don't us. Don't cut them off. You got any more compliments? <laughs> uh, no. We appreciate you, right and we'll you. see you next time on Stand Up Memories. Tune in again. Tune in again. <laughs> <laughs>